The movie magic of Disney has taken us to some amazing places. And to get us there, the Disney movie makers used some amazing special effects. Fire! From big effects <laughs> to even bigger effects. But maybe the most amazing effects of all are the little effects that convince us we're surrounded by an eye-popping posse of leprechauns. Like Darby O'Gill himself, you'll be telling everyone you believe in leprechauns. Grab your shamrocks, brush up on your blarney, and let's get down with the big secrets behind Darby O'Gill and the little people. When it came to movie special effects, no one was in the same league as Walt Disney. He was constantly dreaming up stories and places that would be impossible to show on screen. And then he challenged his staff to do it anyhow. Walt always had plenty of tricks up his sleeve, and he wanted to tell everyone, in a kidding kind of way, that the leprechauns in his new movie were the real deal. There were photos of Walt visiting King Brian on the set, biographies of King Brian but none of the actor playing him, and a special thank you in the movie itself. I captured the king. Can you believe Walt even made a whole TV show about convincing King Brian to appear in the movie? Walt Disney wanted to make sure that people truly believed that leprechauns were real. He turned to one of his most trusted special effects artists, Peter Ellenshaw, who had worked at the studio for many years. At the time Darby O'Gill was made, Disney was the only studio with its own in-house effects department. In those days, before computers, there were two categories of special effects. Optical effects use special cameras and projectors to combine new images with copies of the original film to create effects such as the lightning shooting out from King Brian's whip and the fire around the cave door. Opticals were also used to make horses and banshees fly through the air. Mechanical effects were made by building something mechanical, like giant shoes and the cane beating up Darby all by itself, or a leprechaun trapped in a burlap bag by the way, there's an air-driven puppet inside that bag. Doing the impossible was everyday work for Peter Ellenshaw and his team of effects wizards. The main ingredient they used to make movie magic was careful planning. What I did was a lot of sketches. We got it all organized before we started the film. We knew exactly what we wanted to do. Saves an enormous amount when you're shooting, not to have to stop and think, hey, how are we going to do this? Peter used two important kinds of optical effects in the making of Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Matte painting and forced perspective. Let's take a look at matte painting first. Peter Ellen Shaw was a master matte painter. He had helped create the worlds of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Treasure Island, Swiss Family Robinson, and many other fantastic films for the Disney Studios. I had spoiled Walt by doing mats on Treasure Island and he considered, if you did mats, you don't have to go to a treasure island. And he would tell people, you don't need to go. A matte painting is made by placing a sheet of glass between the camera and the set or location that will be filmed. The matte artist stands at the camera position and paints the part of the set that needs to be added right onto the glass. Here is Peter adding details to this shot of a real ship and coastline. In this shot, the director wanted a castle and a bridge. Notice how the painting matches the colors, lighting, and angles of the actual location where the horses and riders were filmed. In this scene for Treasure Island, the ship was filmed with a modern city in the background. Peter Ellenshaw added more ships to show what a busy English seaport of the 18th century looked like, and he painted the city right out. In this scene, when Darby first sees the Leprechaun King's throne room, Ellen Shaw painted in the roof and the tops of the pillars on the glass to complete the set that was built in the studio. This way, he could hide all the lights in the ceiling above the set and make the cave look as grand as a leprechaun king could want. It's a grand place you got here. Ah, uh, that's well enough. Darby's village was built at the Disney Studios in California. Only the necessary parts of the houses were built. You'll notice that the house on the right has a partial roof. There is only a simple cube where the church is supposed to be. Now watch what happens as Peter Ellenshaw paints in the rest of the scene. Magic, isn't it? 
The key thing that helps the matte artist create this illusion is that the camera has only one eye, the lens. If you close one eye and look around your room, you'll notice that it is very difficult to tell how far one thing is from another. That's why you see Peter Ellenshaw painting with one eye closed, so he can see like the camera. Matte paintings have an advantage over other optical effects because they can be done with the actors and the action right in front of the camera. The director and the special effects team can see if their shot is working without waiting for a special effects shot to come back from the laboratory. There are many other ways to achieve matte painting effects, but this is basically how it works. Now, let's look at another method that is even trickier, forced perspective. In our story, the leprechauns are supposed to be one quarter the size of the humans, but the actors playing the leprechauns are average height. So how did Peter and his team shrink a regular sized person to leprechaun size? The actor playing Darby is placed close to the camera and the actor playing the leprechaun is placed four times farther away. Now, the leprechaun appears to be one quarter the size of Darby. Remember, the camera's single eye, the lens, can't tell how far apart objects in the scene really are from each other. To make the illusion work even better, two sets are built. One is regular size, built for the actor playing Darby. The other is made to match Darby's set, but built four times bigger. This makes the actor playing the leprechaun look small. Every bit of the leprechaun set has to be made four times regular size. In this scene, there was a regular cup and jug for Darby to use and giant versions for King Brian. Once the camera is in place, the last detail is to make sure that the sets blend together and that the colors and lighting are consistent. Looking through the camera, I would decide where it really joined in color, because that's the essential part. It's color for it to be right. In this shot of Darby's feet walking past the leprechauns, he had the actor and the camera on a platform high above the soundstage floor. Here is Peter checking out the angle of the leprechauns on the stage below. This technician is painting the studio floor to match the color of the platform so the camera can't tell where the platform ends or the floor begins. Why are these men lying down on the job? If you look closely, you will see that they are holding little leprechaun puppets. These puppets were placed between the camera and Darby's feet. They move in the same way as the real actors playing the leprechauns far below on the stage floor pretending to watch a giant Darby walking past. Having the little leprechauns in the foreground makes it totally convincing that Darby is walking through the leprechaun crowd. It's those kinds of details that set a Disney production apart from all the rest. Sometimes a shot needs more space than there is available in the sound stages. How did Peter and his crew make the room? Have you ever heard of magicians using smoke and mirrors? Well, in this shot, Peter and his visual effects team didn't use smoke, but they did use a mirror. All right, your royal highness. In order to show Darby walking into the king's cave, Peter started by building a small bit of the cave set behind the actor, high up on a platform above the soundstage floor. On the floor below, where the leprechauns are standing, he built some of the cave rocks and the steps at the entrance. Then, he set up a mirror on the platform between the camera and Darby. The mirror is adjusted in such a way that the camera can see the reflection of the leprechauns on the floor below, but not Darby. Remember, Darby is blocked by the mirror. Ellen Shaw then scraped away the silver coating on the mirror, the stuff that makes it reflective, but only in the part where he wanted to see Darby through the glass. He used the irregular shape of the rocks to hide where he scraped the silver coating away. He then added a matte painting to finish off the cave ceiling and some of the rocks in the foreground. How did the actors cope with working on these enormous sets? Well, most of the time, they couldn't really look at each other because they were so far apart. What you say about Katie? Calm yourself now, calm yourself. They had to pretend to see each other as they spoke their lines. Special marks were made so that their eye lines would appear correct for the camera. This station point is placed on Darby's platform so that he can appear to be looking at an 18-inch high leprechaun right in front of him. And then she'll forget all about you. King Brian had his own station point somewhere off camera. What have I ever done to you? Nothing, Darby. In order for forced perspective to work, both the sets close to the camera and far away from the camera have to be in focus. To achieve this, the director of photography had to use a lot of lights. It was a very hot set, and 
Many times we'd have to close down because it became too hot. Every kind of movie light covered the ceiling of the soundstage, 649 to be exact. In fact, so many lights were used at once that when they were turned on, it caused a massive blackout, cutting off electricity throughout the city of Burbank. And the result of this fuse-blowing effort? Mind-blowing effects like no one had ever seen before. Today, filmmakers like Steven Spielberg pay their respects to Darby O'Gill for its amazing movie magic. And the makers of the Lord of the Rings movies used forced perspective to make the actors playing hobbits look small, just like the leprechauns in Darby O'Gill. The movie magic of Darby O'Gill makes it easy to believe in leprechauns. In fact, it's almost impossible not to.